All right, so we'll get started now with the webinar. So good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining today. Um, my name is Erica, and I'm the Customer Success Manager at Lexalytics. And joining us today um, is co-founder and head of data sciences at Vozik, Dr. Vasu Akula. Um, he is one of our longtime clients and uses our text analytics engine um, on the underlying Vozik platform. He helps, he's helped create and manage um, strategy for clients in establishing voice of the customer base, business performance, improvement programs, and in his 20 years career um, spanning in various industries such as banking, financial services, insurance, retail, technology, telecom and wireless, and utility industries. So he's played key roles in helping Fortune 500 and 1000 companies successfully deploy and realize significant ROI out of contact center performance optimization solutions. So without further ado, I will now uh, pass the floor over to Vasu. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Erica, for all the background, and good afternoon, um, everyone uh, listening. I'm truly excited to share uh, with you all um, on how we uh, partnered with Lexalytics using the text analytics technology um, over the years and helping many of our customers um, tackle problems like reducing customer churn, but many other customer experience problems. So today, um, I'm going to specifically focus on redu reducing customer churn but um, not just you know talk about reducing customer churn, but compare this text analytics approach with the traditional approaches and give you some ideas, um, one or two takeaways that you can um, take back and, and either implement yourself or consult with um, either Lexalytics or Wasic in doing this churn reduction problem 2x faster using text analytics as the secret sauce. All right, so with that, um, I'll jump right in. Um, so before we talk about you know how to do um, this you know solve this problem to x faster, if we take a minute and inspect how um, typical implementations of churn reduction work and how these predictive models uh, work, you notice that you know many of these um, solutions I'm talking about 80 percent, 90 percent of the implementations for churn reduction um, implemented by marketing teams, and they have a lot of data, you know sales and marketing data in terms of um, where the customer lives and what they purchased, how long they purchased, um, their age groups, demographics, all of this goes into um, these so-called predictive models to um, you know predict the likelihood of customer uh, churning at you know two years, three years, or you know all these terms, right? So now if you if we kind of closely look at it, all of this is static data. You know where I live and my age group and how much I pay generally doesn't change. You know month to month, right? It's all generally static in nature. Um, and it also doesn't include um, needs and feelings and wants and wishes of the customer. You know, after the purchase of the, you know, let's say if we use a telephone, um, after the purchase of the telephone two years ago, am I really happy or not with the phone? That information is not typically held by the uh, sales team, right, or the marketing team who um, originally acquired this particular customer. So as a result, you know, we end up with detecting the propensity to churn signal a little late and um, create loyalty problems. So um, while many of these systems work, um, there are ways in which we can certainly um, improve on top of it. So um, now how do, we, how do we do this? So if we kind of think about it, everything that I mentioned that goes into a typical customer churn model is um, identified on the left side. And we are talking about you know, product data, billing data, geographic data, tenure data, you know, how much they pay us data, you know, all of this data. And then, you know, this is our takeaway number one for this webinar. On the right side, if you look at it, customers are calling into the call center and they talk about their issues. You know, hey, you know, I purchased this product and the speed is not good. Or I purchased this product and it is, you know, the memory is not good or the, the you know, price plans is not really what I thought it is or I'm having issues, you know, configuring this email. All these problems they're having with their um, with their purchase, they typically flow into the into the call center. And um, call center, you know, by by design, you know, most of the um, call centers, the way they work, um, you know, customer calls the call center, agent, you know, provides all the answers, 
And at the end of the call, they have a requirement to notate, um, you know, what the issue was and what the resolution was, right? And it's typically in text format, unstructured format. And, um, you know, so far, you know, at least in, a, in the last, you know, you know five, ten you know, plus years ago, it was difficult to mine. But with the advances in technology and, you know, leaders like Lexalytics coming in and solving these problems, it's now becoming um, a untapped data source that many companies are realizing that, hey, you know, I can actually understand our customers far better than how I would understand our customers if I were to do some surveys. Um, and, and and by going into call centers, you know, they're accumulating this data on a very, very large scale, compare that with survey. But in our, you know, specific problem about churn reduction, we're talking about taking the needs and feelings and wants and wishes of the customer from call center, you know, plug that, you know, one piece that um, I showed as the missing piece in the, in the sales and marketing data. And now we could be developing a model that works as well as the, you know, the models that are currently deployed 80, 90% of the time in the world um, using sales and marketing. But by adding this additional layer, we have certain advantages of detecting the signal sooner. And I'm also going to, you know, think about, um, provide some ideas about how we can you know, operationalize this whole thing, right? But point number one, look at text analytics and look at your contact center as a data source for text analytics, okay? Um, so uh, with that as the background, you know, we just talked about, you know, what's the problem today in terms of um, customer churn reduction and, you know, where can we find additional data to uh, speed up certain things, right? I'll jump right into the demo, um, show you how this could be done in a, in a realistic situation, and then I come back with, you know, how to operationalize this whole thing, right? Uh, let me switch my screens. and get to an application. All right. So what we are looking at is the WASIC application. I just logged in already. This is what we are looking at is a telecom um, scenario as an example. And just for illustration purpose, I have one customer who um, called um, many times, you know, March 16, March 18, 19, 21, you know, all the way to 30. And what he's saying is, you know, customer upset with billing. These are typical examples of a call center agent notations at the end of the call, right? Um, they're like a line, two lines, you know, not, not you know, very, very long um, details. But when you look at these things, you know, a million, if you have a million customers, you know, they could be calling, you know, two, three, four million times in a year. And that's how much volume we are talking about, unlike any survey, right? And if we closely look at this, you know, someone is talking about billing and someone is also upset, right? Um, while this, you know, textual format is difficult for a machine to analyze and kind of create, you know, churn, likely to churn scores and things like that, I'll talk about how we construct all of all of this into structured format, and um, you know, use that as input to the to the prediction models. But let's kind of inspect this for a minute. You know, they're talking about billing and they're upset. Um, they're also talking about high bill. They're talking about data usage and things like that, and they're being transferred to billing team. Okay. Then on the next call, a couple of days later, again, he's complaining about being charged for services never used, wants immediate resolution, again, being transferred, okay? Um, now he gives, you know, a little more details, LT services, again, being transferred. Um, now he's talking about refund status here, right? Um, he complains, you know, billing cycle probably kicked in from the background, and then he got an incorrect bill while he's actually kind of trying to solve that problem, right? Um, again, calls refund status, refund status, and to the point of, you know, he wants to now um, cancel, right? So little, you know, details in terms of, you know, what, what is really happening for this one particular customer, right? But when you have a million customers, two million customers, five million customers, you know, how do we really understand all of this? And how do we, you know, make use for this? The answer to that from WASIC point of view is take all of this text, and using um, Lexalytics technology, um, using text analytics technology, we converted all of this into what we call topics. So this is you know, step number one. We take all this unstructured data, look for these keywords, bill, billing, all these things, or refund, um, um, refund, refunds, and you know, various forms of refunds. And we convert this unstructured data coming from agent nodes into topics that we can understand 
um, you know, what the customer is trying to accomplish, right? So after having, you know, this customer calling four or five times, when he calls sixth time, you know, we know that he's actually calling for, you know, billing, whether we want to change that, use that information for um, some proactive service for, for him while he's in the IVR, or we, you know, hijack that call and, you know, provide the right agent, you know, first time, we can do those types of things. But um, in this case, what we are talking about is let's fully understand what the customer is um, calling about, right? Um, so I'll take a minute to explain the detail in this, uh, in this particular diagram. We call this our customer intent graph, right? What this customer intent graph is saying is um, this particular customer is trying to do something about billing and all these lines that we have floating from that one topic into let's say refund or dissatisfaction or no response or all the way to the to the top side which is delay these are things that we just reviewed um, so this customer intent graph takes all these notations and customer by customer it accumulates all this information that is happening in call centers every single day and converts that into this is what this customer is trying to do and actually gives relationships between what's causing what what in this case um, refund is causing dissatisfaction and in fact dissatisfaction is caused by you know many issues it's about you know billing it's about the delay it's about you know he's asking for refunds and there is a line that is connecting into no response right all of this is what is causing dissatisfaction so we understand two things with this customer intent graph what is it the customer is trying to do and what is the root cause of certain key items like you know satisfaction or what is the root cause for why he's asking for refund right so we get answers to these things so this is um, um, you know second takeaway I want to leave the audience with um, looking at call centers and con using text analytics helps us understand root causes of certain things and we can apply this information in various scenarios so I'll go straight into our you know problem again let's go back into churn reduction and you know talk about how we reduce churn to X faster so now what I have is um, a little dashboard. Um, um, this is again created for a telecom uh, demo scenario. And what I have here is um, again in our you know kind of you know pieces of puzzle that we reviewed earlier, um, sales and marketing data. You know let's kind of combine all of this and call it customer identity. Who's this customer? You know what product they purchase? You know is it a prepaid, postpaid? I kept it very very simple. And their age group. Let's say you know. Um, you know, younger demographic, middle-aged demographic, older demographic, or you know where they live. Certain states may have you know higher propensity to churn. Certain age groups may have higher propensity to churn. Certain product lines may have higher propensity to churn. Right. So as illustration, that's basically how the um, churn models are working today. Right. And to that, we add um, we add what we call customer intent data, which is coming from the call centers. Um, we just reviewed right so some of this in fact could also be coming from the IVR so as an illustration here um, I have an example to say that you know, a customer is calling and all these IVRs using you know whether it is natural language technology or push button technology you know press one for billing or say billing um, you know something like that right so all of that goes into the logs and that is also capturing customer intent if you kind of think about it right so we bring that customer intent from the IVR. What is Mr. Customer trying to accomplish coming from the IVR? Actually using his own actions on the IVR. And then what we have um, in the form of word clouds is um, what is our agents saying um, about the primary reasons for the call? Again, taken from text analytics data sources, um, converted using um, natural language processing into nicely organized you know, keyword categories. And they can be defined by industry. You know, healthcare may have certain, you know, main reasons for customers to contact, and telco may have completely different thing, and a research company may have a completely different um, set of keywords um, or or call reasons that they are trying to capture. Right. So by combining this and this, we have even better data than what we could actually find just by looking at keywords only. Right. All of this is helping us understand customer intent. Now, um, so when we combine this customer identity, which is traditional model with customer intent, we obvi obviously have a leg up in terms of um, being able to do something targeted for that one customer, because that's exactly what he's trying to do, right? He's upset about refund 
or he's not getting the service or he's complaining about you know comparing you know this price plan with some other price plan so um, we understand that he might be rate shopping and the offer to him is not a fancier equipment maybe the offer to him is a discounted you know price plan right so we get you know that advantage um, by you know using customer intent for developing predictive models right? but we actually take this one step forward um, you know since we are anyway operating in a customer um, you know call center right um, we have additional factors that contribute um, to churn so if a customer is being transferred like the example that I showed um, numerous times um, he's actually you know putting a lot of effort in getting resolution for his issues and that leads to a little higher percentage of churn so as an example now we look at here FCR which is first call resolution so if the customer is calling multiple times like again the example that we reviewed um, he's putting more effort into that and as a result you know he's more inclined to cancel right or the same thing um, happens if he's putting long call long you know times whether he's talking or kept on hold and all these things if the call durations increase beyond the normal five minutes into you know 15 20 you know, longer durations um, that also raises the customer effort and high customer effort translates into you know, poor loyalty and high churn and all these things right and then to top it off we also bring customer sentiment with all of the data that we are anyway sitting on right and the customer sentiment again um, just like the effort can be discovered numerous ways um, first and foremost you know we can discover that using natural language processing technologies um, here you know like analytics comes into play and just by reading you know upset customer calling about billing things like that um, like analytics has the ability to score that as a negative call right um, so we use that signal um, whenever we can but in case you are running um, net promoter score surveys or satisfaction surveys or post call surveys how did we do you know tell us you know on a scale of one to five and if customers are answering you know we take that value um, you know that data at face value and we also kind of remember okay this customer you know last time when we did the survey he gave us a poor score he's an upset customer or last time we, we did the survey he gave you know fantastic score there's no risk with this customer right in some call centers, you know, there is complaints process, escalation process, and uh, we use that data. And finally, you know, for large scale operation, we also use, um, again, keyword category examples that I showed, you know, upset, frustrated, um, not happy, all these keywords notated by agents in, in the call center to understand what is the sentiment. Now, if you come, come, come back and look at the whole picture, what we have is the traditional model, right? Traditional data sources, right? sales and marketing you know where the customer lives and what he purchased and how old and so on and so forth and then we just added layers and layers of information um, coming at very large scale from call centers it's the IVR data integrated it's the call center integrated all of that converted into intent um, discovering the customer intent and then adding a layer of customer effort and adding a layer of customer sentiment now obviously by adding these additional layers we have more to gain right so that's the way um, I wanted to you know kind of leave this as the takeaway for the audience by going into the call centers we have additional information to build better models okay so with that you know let's come back into now we have a better model you know, how does this whole thing work in a uh, live scenario let's uh, kind of you know recap this whole thing we, we just talked about um, so um, let's see you know the customer is calling and an agent is answering on the left side right and we have call center notes we just talked about and all of this is going into the you know CRM data source uh, systems so we have transactional and demographic data which is what we have been calling traditional data you combine all of this and you know move from WASIC point of view we move all of this data into the cloud so technically the software is already running there minus the data so the moment we plug this data it knows how to understand the sentiment it knows how to categorize this into topics it knows how to integrate you know these you know customer data and agent data and all these things and uh, starts predicting okay this customer you know I see that he called eight times and he said you know competition name in the third from last call and I know that you know he's actually on the way to churn right so earlier we talked about you know discovering the churn signals late now we are talking about you know discovering that signal as it is 
building up, you know, call by call, right? This is no longer static, static now, right? So bottom line, you know, point number three that we see prediction is happening quicker and, and faster. It spits out a score at the end of the day. You know, this customer is not happy and he's ready to churn and all these things. Now the beauty of this thing, and this is kind of, it has a lot of implications in, in implementation. Um, one of the problems that our marketing team, after developing a wonderful um, churn model, is how to contact the customer. We could actually send, you know, a thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand offers, and you and I all got these offers many times. It just goes straight into trash, right? I don't open the marketing offer, right? So contacting customers after doing these predictions is also a challenge. And this is my you know, takeaway number two. So by going into the call center, first of all, we have the same prediction score or a better prediction score and a sonar prediction score. But we are now talking about, you know, a customer is already talking, he's on the phone, and I already have the score, and we haven't delivered this call yet to an agent, right? The IVR can actually detect that I'm talking, you know, I have an unhappy customer um, online, right? And now it allows us to do, you know, various things. Um, you know, I can hijack the call and, you know, know that, you know, I'm talking to an unhappy customer and I hijack the call to the best employee who is uh, fully equipped to deliver these offers. Um, and by doing this over and over for every single call, every time a customer calls, I dramatically increase the contact rate to be able to deliver my offer. So we just talked about a better model and a better contact, right? When you sum up all these things, it certainly works exactly like the old model, if you want to use the sales and uh, marketing demographic data and send marketing campaigns outside, all of that happens in parallel. And now we add a layer of additional intelligence to identify the risk scores as they develop. And we also add a layer of contact um, as customers contact. So by adding one plus one plus one, you have the power of you know really reducing churn um, to X faster. So those are my take, uh, takeaways in terms of like how can we use text analytics to do um, churn reduction to X faster, right? So um, so with that you know I'm ready to recap. Um, hope um, you know um, many of these things um, are um, opportunities that you can take back to your teams and think about you know implementations and if you need any help, you know, feel free to contact either Lexalytics or, or Wasit. But before we close the webinar, you know, I just want to kind of recap, you know, what we just discussed. Um, what we discussed is, you know, leverage text analytics and leverage text analytics primarily in the call center where there is, you know, volumes of customer intent being notated. And the technology has advanced to the point of, you know, making it so easy um, to discover, you know, what each, um, each of your individual customers are in need of, right? So diagnose using text analytics and understand, you know, if your customers are happy, um, you know, how much effort they're putting and all these things. And start applying predictive, I'm um, not sure I understand. Start applying predictive algorithms to um, implement solutions like, you know, the customer churn problem that we just talked about, right? Um, so that's the, you know, gist of uh, what we just talked about, you know, on, on that particular churn reduction problem. but. If we kind of think about it, step back and think about it, uh, we just talked about, you know, a way to take advantage of the data that we, you know, all businesses have, right, um, in the form of call centers, right, and, and notations that happen in the call centers and, you know, how valuable that can be in truly understanding your customers. And we applied that on a problem called reducing customer churn. But by the way, that exact same data, exact same process, exact same technology can also help us improve your uh, net promoter scores. It can also help improve your first call resolution rates um, since you are deploying this technology anyway in call centers. Um, and by reducing, you know, improving first call resolution rate or reducing repeat calls, you're actually cutting cost. And because, you know, this data can be delivered immediately to IVRs, we can optimize our IVRs and again reduce cost, right? And the opposite effect of reducing churn, we can actually, you know, twist this thing into predicting likely sales and actually improve our sales rate also. So whatever your problem might be, whether that is customer retention or customer experience, cost reduction, revenue improvement, the same idea can actually work. Um, so think about you know, um, various ways of you know, taking advantage of you know, these advanced technologies and, and think about your call center as a 
as a data source and think about your text analytics as a way to mine it and, and solve various problems you may have. 